Geek Fix with Ray from DCGrainMaker.com. Today I've got with me the Garmin 935. Uh, this is Garmin's newest watch. Now this video is all about the menu. So I'm basically just gonna walk through the menus, literally every single screen there is in here. Um, if you want more of an explainer about the watch itself, like my overview, my review, if you will, uh, you can check out the video right up there, um, or you can check out my full in-depth review down in the description field. Uh, it makes all these videos I've done, despite how long and crazy these videos are, uh, look like child's play when you look at my full in-depth review. So definitely check Check that out. Uh, with that, we're going to go and just basically walk through the menus, everything you want to know about it. Let's get started. Okay, so here we are on the watch face screen. This is obviously the home screen right there. Um, what we'll do is I'll just kind of walk you through what it looks like with the widgets. So you can go and press up and down uh, to go through the different screens. This screen right here is the heart rate over the last four hours. So you can see just the very end of my interval work I did there, the 156 that you see, um, kind of going beyond the four hour time frame right now. It would measure my heart rate. Um, you can see that right there, the optical heart rate sensor that's enabled. But of course it's not on my wrist, so you're not gonna see that. Uh, I can press this button up here in the right hand top corner to go ahead and see the resting heart rate over the last seven days. Uh, so I wasn't feeling so good earlier in the week there, and you can see that definitely impacted things. And then it just sort of tapered back down again uh, here, so not too bad. Um, if I go ahead and escape back out, go down through the rest of the widgets here. Um, we can see my training status. This is using the new first beat analytics uh, piece. Now this generally does take one to two weeks to really kind of get into things and then up to a month actually of, of your workouts uh, to really understand what you're doing. Uh, nonetheless, right now my fitness is increasing, my load staying about uh, static, and then my training status is productive. I can go ahead and I can hit this top button to dive into it. I can see my running VO2 max first, followed by my cycling VO2 max, followed by the recovery hours. Uh, it's recommending easy effort after my intervals today. I will, of course, completely ignore that uh, for tomorrow. My training load, now the training load number is variable based on each person. So you see right now, uh, 555 is my load. Uh, that's you know, a number that roughly goes between a couple hundred and a thousand. Um, but don't, like, don't try to compare training load to other people. Uh, it's based on you and your number is kind of specific to you. So if I was low here or too high, it would show that in the graphs. Um, here is my FTP. Uh, now I've really only done one hard bike workout since I last updated uh, the firmware here, so that's why it's a little bit off, uh, so it's definitely a little bit low. I got a, a nice ride out tomorrow that I got planned, so that'll probably bump this FTP estimation back up again. Keep in mind the FTP does require a power meter, um, so that's one thing. Everything else here I'm showing thus far just can use the optical heart rate sensor, but this does require a power meter. Uh, and again, this is like the other metrics, this does take a little bit of time and a number of workouts under your saddle, no pun intended, um, to get things going. Uh, race predictor is the same way, a few more workouts and I should have this uh, pretty stable uh, from a uh, you know, accuracy standpoint, but it, this is based on VO2 max, really simple lookup tables for your age and gender uh, and the VO2 max that it estimates. And then we're back to the um, VO2 max I just talked about. So going through this again, this is the last sport, so you can see a trainer ride here, um, and it, it'll change based on whatever your last sport was. Uh, there is no distance on this particular uh, trainer ride, but there is speed and things like that. And then I can go into the uh, daily activity monitoring. So here's the steps for the day. I'm at uh, just shy of 14,000 steps. My goal for the day was 10,415. I can press this top right button there uh, and I can go ahead and dive into the steps for the week. So you can see the last seven days. Um, and if I go on down here, you can see the distance. Uh, and so the light, by the way, that keeps going on and off of that's because it's, I've got it set for about an eight second backlight. So in a second, I'll show you, or a second, I will show you how to change that. Uh, we'll go down here. This is if my calendar had any events to it, nothing right now, uh, no notifications that I haven't cleared. Uh, and then the weather, and I can dive into that. It's been a nice, nice day, certainly today. Uh, and then the next few days as well, I can see that there. Um, so at this point, I'm back to the time. Let's go and get that light change because it's annoying me. Um, I'm gonna go down into the settings right here, all the way down into system, down the bottom. There we go. And then into backlight. And uh, for right now, I'm just gonna put it into timeout of, uh, I'm gonna do a minute because I, I certainly will talk in between that. So as long as I press the keys once every minute, I'm good. Um, so since we're in settings here, let's go back. Uh, this is sort of the settings option. I can go to settings for activities and apps. This is where I would change uh, settings for run and treadmill and indoor bike and all the different sport modes I have on here. Uh, widgets allows me to control the things that you just saw there. So heart rate, performance, uh, last ride. Uh, that's why it was my last ride as opposed to my last uh, workout. Uh, and then so on. So I can add widgets right there if I want to. Um, and this would add other things like last sport instead of last ride or last run, last swim, golf, floors climb, and on and on. There's plenty of widgets to choose from. Uh, so lots of options there. Uh, 
And you can also get widgets on Garmin Connect uh, via Connect IQ. Watch face, I can customize a lot here. So I can customize the general look and feel, so watch as I go down through these different options. Uh, and then I can go ahead and customize the data on it. So once I press this, I can say customize. This first one allows me to do the layout, for example, the seconds, the data being displayed. I can change you know, those top metrics up at the, at the top, I guess. Um, not quite as much flexibility as the Phoenix layout um, on this particular default watch face, uh, but you can change other watch faces, so you're gonna get the same thing at the end of the day, um, but just kinda to kind of get back into the settings here. So we talk watch face. Uh, oh, there we go, settings, sorry. Uh, we talk watch face, sensors and accessories. Um, this is where you'll see my wrist heart rate. Uh, so I can go and I can turn on broadcasting a heart rate uh, just temporarily, or I can do it, uh, yes, we'll exit broadcast mode, um, or I can do it constantly anytime I start during a uh, sport activity, which is what I wanna go and set that for there to be on. That way if I have like a Garmin Edge device or some other device that picks up AMP Plus, um, I can go ahead and get the heart rate from the wrist uh, right there, which is pretty darn cool. Down below, I have the compass settings, uh, so you can see calibrate. Uh, these are the same settings you would see on a Phoenix 5, um, which is probably a good time to mention this. This is the exact same software as a Phoenix 5. So if you're familiar with a Phoenix 5, it's the same, it's, it's identical, like there's no differences, um, except one tiny minor UI thing I will talk about in a little bit um, in one menu, that's it. Uh, so altimeter, uh, same thing, I can calibrate it, um, or I can go just use auto calibration, which basically pulls from GPS. Uh, the barometer, I can change the plot, uh, enable the storm alert, going into sensors here. So these are sensors that I have um, on different things, like this is a power meter, this happens to be a power tap P1, this is a uh, four eyes uh, power meter, I believe, DI2. Um, this is the new RD pod that uh, was just announced. Uh, so I wanna actually turn that on, I meant to have that on for earlier. Um, so these are all sensors, I can add new sensors up here. Um, you can see heart rate, speed, cadence sensor, power, foot pod, uh, verb action camera, Tempe, Shimano DI2 shifting, general shifting, this is clever, so this is inclusive of SRAM and Campy EPS. Uh, Garmin lights or general lights, um, including Braunschweiger, Garmin's radar, or any radar out there, there's only really Garmin though. VeriVision heads of display, RD pod, and the muscle oxygenation, so like Moxie and BSX. Lots of sensors. Oh, and by the way, this is both AMP Plus and Bluetooth Smart. So you can get Bluetooth Smart heart rate sensors, Bluetooth Smart speed and cane sensors, and Bluetooth Smart power meters, as well as foot pods. Um, so like the Phoenix 5, this does all of those. Anyways, we've talked about sensors. We'll go back out, uh, mapping. Now there is no map in terms of like seeing rivers and stuff like that on the watch. This is not like the Phoenix 5X. Instead, it's more like the Phoenix 5 and 5S, uh, which means that you can do a breadcrumb trail map and see where you've been and route on top of that. Um, but again, you're not gonna see rivers and buildings and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so this allows you to go and change some of those basic settings like whether or not it zooms, uh, locations that you've saved on the map, and so on. Phone settings here, this is for the phone pairing, so it's connected right now, uh, smart notifications, alerts, and so on. I can go and change these as I see fit. Wi-Fi, this does have Wi-Fi in it, unlike uh, some of the Phoenix 5 models, which is a really wonky thing because this is a cheaper watch than, than the Phoenix 5 model, so the fact that this has Wi-Fi and that doesn't uh, is certainly odd. Um, Physiological metrics, so this is where I can look at auto detection different things. Um, for example, max HR and max threshold and FTP, all those being enabled. Um, performance notifications, so this is during the middle of a um, activity to see performance condition, a new VO2 max, training effect, recovery time. Uh, these are all on by default. Um, log HRV data, so resting heart or um, RR data, sorry, and uh, you can enable that there, I just did that for fun. That's for mostly third party apps that want that. We then get into user profile settings, so I can go ahead and I can look at things, you know, gender and, and so on there. Uh, pretty straightforward stuff. I can also configure heart rate zones through here, um, and I can go ahead and configure power meter zones as well. Um, so, for example, this one right here, I would change this up to my actual FTP, so probably 290, 295, something like that. Um, Going back out of this, <clears throat> group track is Garmin's new group track functionality. It's actually not that new. It came out with the Edge 820 last summer. Uh, basically allows you to track multiple friends and to see where they are uh, while you're out routing, routing, riding. So um, that's on the watches now. It came on the Phoenix 5 as well. Activity tracking allows me to enable things like the move alert or disable move alert, uh, goal alerts. Move IQ is for automatic sport recognition. So I just came back uh, from a walk and kind of a ride across town getting some errands done. So this would now on my phone show me um, those activities. So it'd show me that uh, kind of long walk and it'd show me that uh, pedal on a bike share sort of thing. So I don't use Move IQ for any sort of legit workouts. This is just to capture things that you may be doing 
around the course of your day that you wouldn't otherwise capture. Navigation, uh, this is if you're using the navigation mode. So again, the exact same functionality as a Phoenix 5. Um, so you get those heading bugs and um, I can look at alerts, for example, at my final distance and I can also get the off course alerts as well. Uh, let's see, data screens. You can have custom data screens for navigation itself. Um, these are in addition to whatever you have for a given sport specific mode. Uh, so you can see those right there, screen one, screen two, screen three, screen four, screen five. You can customize all these by going into them deeper. Um, so you can see right here, uh, estimated time, ETB, uh, distance remaining, and ETA. Okay, so those are the data screens for navigation uh, system. Down in here, we got language choices, you know, plenty of languages to go through right there. You can also download more languages typically um, using the Garmin web updater. I will leave it on English. Uh, the time, you know, whether 24 hour time, 12 hour time, uh, so on. If you want to sync it with GPS, you can do that right there. A backlight that we changed already during activity, you can have it. So like for me during activity, I like to have the backlight always on. Um, and then a watch mode, I like to have it the eight seconds that I have when I started the video, just so I'm not gonna burn through battery if I press it in the middle of the night or something like that. Uh, sounds, you can enable these. I choose key tones to be off since I don't want it chirping every single time I press a button. Um, alert tones though during activity, definitely on. Vibration, and then uh, when you press a button, you can also do key vibration as well. Uh, do not disturb, just simply is to set it to, to not do any alerts at all. Uh, controls menu, so the controls menu controls something up here and allows you to uh, change and configure what's in that menu. So some of these options are right there. I'll show you the controls menu in just a second. Hotkey. Um, this is where you can go and set uh, basically holding for start, uh, back button, and what happens during each one of these different functions. Um, so for example, this one up here that you see, uh, hold down is for changing sports. So you can use that like a multi-sport mode uh, to change sports forever and forever and forever. So uh, kind of like making an impromptu triathlon mode. Auto lock is off, but you can have it automatically uh, lock when certain things happen. For example, um, during an activity, uh, it automatically locks. You can also combine that, by the way, deep in the triathlon settings. That'll auto lock after every single sport is changed. I definitely would recommend that. Units here, you can go and change from uh, distance to miles, or sorry, miles to kilometers. So you can do this on a per, uh, I guess, metric standpoint, if you will. So like if, for me, a lot of times I like to change my um, elevation to meters, because I live here in Europe and so everything's in meters. Uh, but I still kind of like, I guess, just, you know, being uh, American, I still like distance and miles. Um, I can use kilometers just fine, but just the way I mentally think, and the same for pace uh, to be miles. But I, just, I do like uh, meters for elevation. And you can see the different metrics that you can change uh, between essentially the metric version as well as the statute versions. Uh, format, so uh, again, these are just basic formatting options that you can change in the watch. I mean, there's so many options here. Uh, data recording, this is by default, smart recording, I change it to every second. USB mode, you're really not gonna need to change this unless you're using some of the older Garmin apps that may want it in a different mode, just leave it on mass storage. Um, and software update would then pull from Wi-Fi or any of the software updates that are queued up. And about shows me the current release. This is the beta release, so it's the beta for firmware version I am on. Um, they're very, very close to shipping though. Uh, so it'll be uh, a different firmware version that you'll have on there. Probably set the increment a little bit higher than that. So we've looked through settings. Uh, let me talk the controls menu. So I can press this button up here. And what this does is this goes into this rot rotary style controls that came out on the Phoenix 5. So I can quickly access things like find my phone, save location, lock keys. This is super, super useful if you're doing a sport like skiing where you may have gloves on um, and you just wanna quickly lock the screen. You can do that with like just literally two presses, uh, very quick. Uh, you can enable do not disturb mode, sync right away with the watch. And then uh, this is also for phone connectivity. Um, in this case, I can customize some of these to a small degree, but not a ton of customization. Anyways, let's actually start to use this thing from a sport standpoint. You're gonna press this button up here, uh, and that's gonna get in the sport mode. Now this is the singular difference between this and the Phoenix 5 that I can find, um, and Garmin says there's really no other tangible differences either, and this is, this is it, basically, to change this little screen right here. So right now it's showing me red at the top, which means that it's already started searching for GPS right now um, when I'm in the sport menu, and actually the Phoenix 5 does the same thing. You probably didn't know that, but it does that when you're still deciding on what sport to choose. I can go down though, and I can see other sports, so treadmill, indoor track, bike, um, et cetera and then down to the apps that I have down here. So this is technically an app, the HRV Stress one, uh, that you can use with the heart rate strap, the Training Peaks app, um, the Navigate app, 
and then I can go and add apps down here as well. So for example, uh, and this is another little nuance difference, the Phoenix 5 includes uh, the Navigate one. I actually I put it already on my thing there as well as some of these other ones uh, in the default set, like Track Me is there as well, um, versus with the 4935, you have to add it, but that literally, as you just saw, that's like a two second operation. I press this, I add, and I'm, I'm done. Like it's, it's really that simple. So nothing to like fret about there. Um, Training Peaks is new. This is something that Garmin uh, and Training Peaks have kind of partnered and announced today as well. So what this does is it allows me to go ahead and pull my workout from Training Peaks itself uh, for the day, the schedule workout that's on there, and then run through that. It's simply transferring that workout file to the default uh, Garmin workout parser. So it's not like super complex or super fancy, um, but it's a nice touch. You can check out my full video on this uh, up in the corner up there. I walk through how it all works out outside, so it's pretty cool. Uh, so we're gonna go back out of this and into the run activity. Um, now, because I'm indoors, I'm never gonna find GPS. Uh, so what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna do the run indoor option. So a treadmill right there, and then that'll get me to the screen. And this is my default data fields for this. Um, so I haven't started. So basically it's looking for optical heart rate right now uh, on the back. There we go. So I just turn it on as soon as I start moving it. And uh, that'll continue to look forever, essentially. So you can see I can change my data fields. I press these buttons right there. No heart rate right now, obviously, so I'm not gonna see that. Uh, now these are the four basic pages that you see, uh, but I can certainly customize these just by holding down this middle button right there on the left-hand side, go into treadmill settings, data screens, and now I can add more data screens. So I can go down to the bottom here. These two, for example, are if I have the RD pod or a Garmin HRM try or HRM run heart rate strap to get uh, the running dynamics pieces there. If I go all the way down to the bottom though, I can add a new page. I can choose what kind of page, whether it be custom data, virtual partner, music controls. Um, I'll go custom data. If you're outside, by the way, then you'll get the options also for map and compass and elevation, but because we're in treadmill mode, none of those three would apply. Here's my layouts. I can choose one field, two field, three field, three field different way, four, uh, three field a third way, four field, four field a different way. Um, so lots and lots of options here. Once I've selected one, I got to choose which fields for each one. So I can say, you know, the distance field, I'll go lap distance, uh, choose this one here. I'm going to say it's going to be, I don't know, heart rate field, heart rate, uh, this one here. We'll go down to, and just picking random stuff at this point, cadence, cadence. And then uh, the last one here, uh, elevation, compass, navigation. Obviously not all these are gonna apply and let's pretend I had a mux, a muxy, a muxy oxygenation sensor. I'll put that there. Um, so you can see that I've created my data field. I can skate back out and I can go into, um, see at the bottom here, there it is right there. Back into the sports settings very, very briefly. Um, so treadmill settings, we kind of did the data screens. There's alerts in here, there's a Metrodome feature. Uh, I can turn on or off auto lap. It's also where I can customize uh, my lap banner. So every time I press the lap button, additional data fields that I get um, and go down into here as well. Auto pause, on or off, auto scroll, uh, background color. Um, again, these are all for every single sport has these, by the way. Training is where I can look at things like my structured workouts are in there. So there's a Saturday workouts I just pulled in. Um, you see a duplicate right now. It actually cleans that up automatically uh, because I'm in the workout mode from that training peaks thing a second ago. Um, but as soon as I kind of clean this up or, or escape all the way back out again, it just reduces it down to the uh, single unique ones. Um, intervals here, this is where I can do a, a simple interval workout on the fly. I can change the settings. I can go and say, I want my interval distance to be something else. I want my rest time or distance to be something else. I can never repeats, the warm up, um, cool down. So it's just kind of your basic mode. Whereas the ones up here, uh, you want to download from either Garmin Connect or now Training Peaks as well. And you can create your own with my workouts and you can get really, really complex with it across any sport that you want. Strava Live segments. So Strava Live segments are on this for both uh, cycling and running. You can see these here. So here is a, a test segment that I created just outside uh, my PR. I can look at the map for it example. Uh, you can see just kind of a straight, straight line there. The elevation pod, I can pull that up. It's really, really flat. It's all in the river. Just only two feet of elevation gain there. And the same for other ones. So I think I've got uh, some. This one here is a uh, a little bit longer uh, climb down to Spain, I believe. Um, so you can see, uh, not, not too long of a climb, but um, oh, this is meters, sorry. So now yeah, it's 48 meters. Uh, not a lot though in the grand scheme of things. Um, this one is a legit climb, I believe. Uh, so there we go. Now we're talking a bit more. So 212 meters um, over the course of a mile and a half. So uh, not too shabby. Anyways, these are all here. Uh, these automatically sync for anything you have favorited from Strava on your Strava premium account. So it does require that. Lactate threshold test, this does require a heart rate strap, so keep that in mind. Um, 
setting a target. These are kind of different options I can do in terms of, you know, like a distance target and pace target and stuff like that to race along. You can race other activities. So I can go from history and race today's run, for example, um, or I can download things from Garmin Connect and race those. Training calendar will pull up items from Garmin Connect. I don't have anything assigned right now from Garmin Connect. And then we get into history. So history allows me to look at past activities. So I can see today's run, for example, this was a bit of an interval run. Um, so I can look at kind of the overview. Uh, you know, you're gonna see, uh, for example, the new TE numbers up there from first speed to uh, cadence, ascent, all that kind of stuff. And then I can go down here and get into training effects and I can see that uh, 4.3 and 3.6. Um, I can see what it's doing to lactate, lactate threshold, highly improving. I can go down further and see my time and zone. Um, and if I go back here, I can see the elevation plot. Uh, for this run, it's very, very flat. Uh, you'll see some minor nuances as I did these repeats around this canal that you can see little tiny bumps across the middle there uh, for each set I went around, but uh, we're not talking very much. So records, this is PRs, uh, only on the watch itself. So these are kind of disappointing right now. Um, the one mile is only 646 or whatever because uh, this is since the last firmware update in my case. Uh, once you get to production, then it it's keeps those on the watch for forever, but not necessarily in the beta process. So um, totals, options here, uh, delete activities. Basically, these are the bad things. It should just be called bad options. And we're back to settings. So uh, once I were to press start on this right there, um, it would start the timer. And you can see here the timer is going. Obviously, I'm not moving, so it's not doing anything. Indoors, it would use the accelerometer from this unit right in there to provide for cadence as well as pace um, and distance too, of course. Uh, you do not need the HRM anything um, or the RD pod to get cadence. It's a bit of a misconception. Um, I'm not sure if it's like poor marketing or whatever, but uh, you don't need that for cadence. That's done by the wrist itself. Uh, and I can go press the lap button there. You can see lap number one uh, and the two metrics that I had left the default right there uh, are automatically shown. So you can change this lap banner screen that I talked about earlier. Um, so with that, I'll click on stop and I'm gonna discard this workout because I really don't want 11 seconds as uh, shown up on Strava. People will like give me favorites and all sorts of stuff for 11 seconds. Don't give me favorites for 11 seconds. Just no, 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 it's not good. Um, anyways, uh, give me the recovery time. This is still just showing my previous recovery time. This is cumulative and it also will decrease over time. So if I came back for an hour from now, you'd see 38 hours as opposed to 39 hours. And if I wouldn't do another workout, it would add on top of that. So I think we've gone through everything. I don't think there's anything left on this watch to press anything, any more buttons. Uh, we talked about all this stuff right there. We talked about all the settings. Uh, I think I'm basically out of things to press. Okay, with that, thanks for watching. Go and then like that like button down there as well as the subscribe button. Uh, that way you get, st stay tuned for all the latest sports technology goodness. Uh, there is a ton of 4935 videos and stuff. I've covered lots of things from swimming um, to the RD pod, how that works. Uh, also the training peak stuff and then my general overview. Uh, and of course, there's tons more cool videos that I'll probably put out as well about the 935 as well as the Phoenix 5 series. As I mentioned earlier, those are the exact same watches from an internal standpoint. It's purely like the shell and the bezel that's different. Uh, and I talk about all that in the overview video. Uh, have a good one.